Hi, I'm Derek and welcome to a new video here on my YouTube channel. And today I want to combine or start two new series here on my channel. And the first one is being creative with drum books. Drum books are fantastic to learn concepts, different methods, beats, etc. Okay? And I love drum books, but I've always loved it to combine different concepts from different books, different teachers, of course, from myself and try to come up with my own exercises or ideas. Okay? The second thing is the work in progress. And in this series, I want to share with you what I'm working on right now. And it's not about perfection, but it's just to share ideas and what I'm doing right now and I'm working on and maybe how I work on this. Okay, so let's get started. And today I want to show you an exercise from the Jazz Drummers Workshop book by John Riley. As you know, I'm a big John Riley fan and uh, I've made a few videos about the Art of Bob Drumming book, which is fantastic. And today I want to show you an idea how to be maybe uh, be creative with a second line application. Okay, I will show you the first two ways John Riley explains and then I will show you my version. Okay, so let's get started to play the first bar as he explains on snare drum and bass drum. So it's a typical second line sounding application. This was the first application by John Riley. So playing the accents, the snare drum and bass drum and the hi-hat on two and four. The next one is to play it between bass drum and snare drum, this pattern, and play a standard jazz ride cymbal pattern on top of it. So again, don't be confused. I'm an open-handed, left-handed or left-handing lead, whatever player. So I play the jazz right symbol here and of course if you're right handed then you play the jazz right symbol with the right hand and the snare drum with the left of course. So high hat and two and four, um, jazz right pattern and the rhythm I've just played between bass drum and snare drum. If you have already may have noticed, I'm playing these grooves not on a standard jazz kit, but here on my more deeper and louder pop or rock kit, okay? That brings me to my application and this means I straighten out the triplets or the shuffle feel and play the bass drum snare drum pattern as a kind of funky groove fill in under a hi-hat pattern, okay? So the hi-hat pattern is the typical t -t 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 -t, so funky pattern. Okay? And now here is the pattern between bass drum, snare drum and hi-hat, but played straight and more in a funky pop context, okay? Sounds like this. So if you play just a few bars of a time in front, then it sounds for me like a cool fill-in.
So, and this is the work in progress thing. So, okay, there are 50 more permutations, so variations on this beat, and they, of course, all sound different. And this is what I'm working on. So, I work um, separately on each bar or combination. So, there are two bar phrases because they are written in eighth and quarter notes. And um, I try to find a speed where I can play the whole page, so um, all 16 exercises or variations in a row to train my left hand and um, increasing the speed step by step to build some endurance and stamina, okay? And yeah, so for me this is fun because when I play a funky groove and then I have some variations just to shift uh, the accents and the backbeat. That's really fun. And of course, the basic idea is to play it as a second line beat with a shuffle or triplet interpretation. This is the basic and um, yeah. Try this, let me know what you think about this concept and the two series, so the um, being creative with drum books, there will, there will be a, a lot more soon coming out. I have a lot of ideas and um, I'm still practicing and the work in progress thing, okay? So this is not, as I mentioned in the beginning, about perfection, but just to give you ideas to work on things, be creative with other stuff and so on and on, okay? So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.